Map fans, welcome back. Today we're looking at ChatGPT in QGIS. In this video, we'll be using the QChatGPT plugin, which has been developed by Marius Kiriakou. Installing the plugin is really easy. Just go up to Plugins, Manage and Install Plugins. When that opens, you can search for QChatGPT, select and hit Install. If this is the first time you're installing, QGIS may need to install some dependencies as well. With the plugin installed, we can go back to our plugins menu, select QChat GPT, and open the QChat GPT panel. So, how can we use Chat GPT in QGIS? That is a question that Hans Vanderkast asked. He put out a really good video, so do check that out and check out his channel too. That was on an older version of QChat GPT, though, and in this video, we're using version 0.3. You'll notice now that we have a settings panel. And if you click on that settings panel, you can enter an API key, which you'll need to get from OpenAI in order to get this to work. Hans looked at a couple of use cases in his video, and I'd just like to revisit those and see how the new version handles them. So let's look, first of all, at what a suitable CRS is for leads in the UK. And QChat GPT comes back with 27700. Looks good to me. Let's check the geocoding capabilities by asking for a point as a geojson for leads in the UK. With this new version, we can just click add on map the last AI and the geojson will appear on our map. Now I'm just going to make this a bit more prominent so you can see it. Let's make it bright pink, OK, and a little bit bigger. And there we go. We have a geojson point on leads in the UK. Now we'll go for something a bit more specific and ask for the coin exchange in Leeds UK. If I click add on map the last AI, that should land on the corn exchange, but it hasn't. It is quite a ways off. So it looks like ChatGPT is a little bit drunk. Now, one of the really neat things about the web version of ChatGPT is that you can have a conversation with it. So if I ask to try again and be more accurate, oh no, I would like to buy a new laptop that is powerful enough to run demanding software and applications. Again, it looks like ChatGPT is drunk. And the reason for this is that we have no context in this version of ChatGPT. But if you watch right through to the end, I will show you a neat little tinkering that I have done with the original code from Marios, and we might have some context available. What about coding? Let's ask for a list of layers using PyQGIS in our current project, and back it comes with a chunk of Python code. Notice it is nicely formatted. I'll just copy this and then open up a console paste that code in there, hit enter a couple of times, and there's our layers. Now I did mention that if you watch to the end of the video, there'd be a little surprise for you. And what I'm doing here is just installing a development version of QChat GPT that I have been working on. And once I install this, what I've done is given ChatGPT a little bit of a memory. In fact, we've given QChat GPT a brain. That's not true at all. What I've actually done is just given it a little bit of context. And so we take the previous prompt and the answer to that prompt and then feed it in as a new prompt. And this means that ChatGPT understands what we've asked it previously. So let's ask for that same PyQGIS script. And I'm just going to copy that and put it into the prompter. There we go. Paste that in. And there's a list of our layers as before. Now, with this context enabled, what I can then do is ask QChatGPT to provide us or update that script that it's just provided and give us some uh, CRS information for those layers as well. And this means that you can kind of guide QChatGPT into the answer that you want it to give. So if it spits something out and it's not correct, then you can ask it to go back and refine its answer for you. Another one that Hans tried out was asking about plugins and what suitable plugins there might be. So this is just a quick conversation with QChatGPT to find a decent plugin to get base maps into my QGIS project. Now, do be aware that there will be some drift on this. I've only got the last six interactions going in there, and it is possible for QChatGPT to get confused. Not just slightly confused, but very confused hallucinatory you might say. But here's an example of a quick conversation 
Um, it's always worth checking the results that QChatGPT gives back to you as well, because it is not always correct. What about using QChatGPT in analysis? Here I've got some polygons and some points, and I'd like to find out how many points are in each polygon. Now I'm going to do this on the fly so that you can see what it's like in real time. And I've just asked the question in QGIS, I have a points layer, points, and a polygon layer, polygons. How can I find out how many points are in each polygon? Now I'm being really descriptive here because I want QChatGPT to fully understand the problem. So it's come back with a couple of suggestions. I could use a count points in polygon tool and it tells me where to find it. That's pretty neat. Or joint attributes by location. Hmm. Also neat. Two options there. Now these data are in a geo package. So I wonder if it can help me out with the SQL. So I've asked it to provide SQL and provide the code as well. And this is what it's going to come back with. Ah, assuming you have a geo package with points and polygons layer, you can use SQL to count the number of points in each polygon. Here's an example query. Now let's just try and run this off the bat and see what happens. And I can tell that this is going to go wrong, but we'll put it in anyway, copy and paste it in, execute, and we get an error. <gasps> oh no. What is the error? So we've got no such column called P polygon ID. What it's doing here is it's looking for its ID column. It's not called polygon ID. If I go into polygons and look at the fields, you can see it's called FID. ID field is FID. Try again. Aha, this is looking a little better. So let's copy and paste that in and see what we get here. Execute that. Now we've got a different problem and we have Q. There is no geometry. Ah, so our polygons are in as Q and instead of geometry, they have a geom field. All right. So let's just change that up and try it out. And then we have the number of points for each polygon. Now that is pretty neat. Thank you very much, QChatGPT. All in all, a very powerful tool. And don't forget that you will need an API key for this. Now, the API key, it's not free usage. So my usage so far in March has been 49 cents and I get an allowance of $18. I think today in making this video, I have used about 23 cents worth. Um, so that is quite a lot of requests. Let's have a look. 14 requests at 12 o'clock. You can see how many tokens it's using and tokens relate to the size of the prompt that you're putting in. Now, because I've added this extra context, that means that the prompts are much longer than they would have been otherwise. But that context is really important because it means that you can actually discuss things and ask uh, QChatGPT to refine its answers. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and have a wonderful day. Cheerio bye and happy mapping.